What's up guys, Ben here from uh, culturedkiwi.com uh, What I'm going to do today is just to show you how I composite the images that I took uh, back in London uh, mm. while doing long exposure night photography um, I have a total of three images that I want to join together and make one image um, Each has separate elements that I'd like to take in on top of one base image. Now it's very easy and very quick so long as you do it right and I'll show you how to do it uh, right now. So what I have here is my base layer that has a nice swan here in the foreground and a nice exposure on the stars, not too bright, not too much of the city light creeping in and we have, it's, it's about six second exposure from memory, yes. So it's good, good to work with. Now I have the second image here which has the lights from the cycles that drove past. If you haven't seen the, the video that shows me going through all the thought processes to take these images then I'll link it down below so just check that out. Um, this one has the cycle lights like I said and the third image has a, another swan over here which when combined uh, with the base layer image I think it would look fantastic with both swans sort of looking at each other. Anyway, what I always start with is take take the image that you want to work with as your base layer, which is this one, and go through, first of all you can see the white balance is very off here, and I'll look at, you can use the dropper tool here, and take it down and click on something that you know is supposed to be white, say the swan for instance, and what it's done, it's a bit too blue here. So what I'll do is use the tungsten preset, which is always the next best option in a city environment where they have a lot of street lights, which are generally tungsten bulbs, very warm light. Uh, and you'll see that's fixed it quite well. The second problem I have is you can see the, the vignetting from the lens, this Canon 16-35 to f2.8 has, has a decent amount of vignetting uh, and some lens distortions. So we'll enable the profile corrections and chromatic aberrations here in Lightroom. Uh, then I'll quickly just have a look at what the auto gives us because sometimes that can do a lot of the work for us and hey I'm all about reducing workload um, I'm happy to make my creative decisions but if the computer can help me do it then why not use it uh, I'll bring these highlights down further because it, it was blown out a little bit over here and you can see now we've got rid of just about all the the overexposed areas which is which isn't which is good um, I'll bring the shadows up a little bit and what I'll do then just to bring some contrast back into the image is use the contrast lighter up here. Uh, the whites I'll bring up a touch which will bring out the stars a little bit more than they were previously and then bring down the blacks again which is adding more contrast funnily enough. Um, clarity, always give the image a little bit of clarity which will help deepen the, the difference between the light and the dark pixels. Maybe a little bit too much. Uh, and a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation. But again, go easy on that because you don't want it to look fluorescent. Unless you're on Instagram because for some reason people seem to like the hell out of those pictures. Um, we're not going for that look today. We can do that if we want to uh, with some mobile editing application. Uh, I'll just further bring these down and bring the shadows back up. This is the, the curves tone curves and you can see here's the shadows and here's the highlights it mirrors the histogram here quite closely so if we want to bring up the shadows we can do that here and if we want to bring down the highlights we can do that here as well but we see it, it crushes the image it's a very powerful way to edit the image so you always want to be subtle with that unless you know what you're doing and you really want to go for a certain look uh, moving right down the list here, I'll hit the sharpening and what you do is you go to your masking here, you hold down option and drag your masking slider. You see if you don't do any masking when you sharpen, what you're going to do is sharpen the whole image. You don't want to do that, trust me. As we move across you see now it's picking up all the noise in the image and it's looking to sharpen that as well. We don't, we don't want to do that so we keep moving along until you just see it collects the edges of all the different elements in the photo that you want to sharpen. And I think about there is right. You see, we've got the swan in the foreground. All the stars will be nice and sharp. And we'll just go a little bit further just to be safe. 
Because if it sharpens the noise, it introduces more noise, and you end up with a, having to add more noise reduction to undo the changes you did with the sharpening, and it snowballs out of control. So do the sharpening. Next, noise reduction with the luminance slider. If we bring that up to around 20, 25 or so, we don't need to go overboard. If I take this little slider here and check out around the image, I think I think we'll be okay, really. I mean, it, it's looking to, we're going to publish it on the web. I'm not planning on making a billboard out of it. Oh, just, I'll leave it there for now. And going further down, dehaze we can use, but use, use that carefully because you see where there's a difference between the city lights here and the actual sky, you'll get some sort of... <laughs> terrible 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 separation there so just use that very very carefully I'll just say four or five it works very well where there is a lot of haze I thought perhaps it could get rid of this haze but not in this case another thing I see here is there's a bit of a lens flare here coming from must be this light if you draw a line through from this light you see there's the start of the lens flare see there it looks like a little bird flying upwards and then we have this here now, I'm not sure if I can get rid of this. I mean, it's it's something you have to live with. Lens flares are a pain, especially if it's big like this. But this I can easily remove. Come up here to the spot removal tool. Use the square brackets and bring this down. Just to clear the image and then click. And you'll find that it will remove it very nicely. Alright, so... Use that as our base layer. We have there our final image. You see that's gone. A nice little lens flare. I'll leave that one in there. It's not too distracting. I could try, try with this, but I am hesitant, hesitant on to see what the results are. It's just, it's a bit of a too big an area. Sometimes it'll end up adding more artifacts. Oh, you see that worked quite well, but it... Ah, look at that. Let's leave it. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so here's our base layer image. We'll leave that. That's, we'll say that's the final condition. Now what we want to do is sync this across our other images. Just deselect, which is Command D. Now if I head over and hold down Command or Control on a, on a Windows and just hit Sync here, it'll bring up this box. Now what we want to do is, because we're just going to take certain elements out of the other photos, we want to make sure, we don't need to do our local adjustments, because, well we haven't done any local adjustments, but we have done spot removal. We'll just uncheck that because we're only focusing on this area and the other little swan that we're going to bring in from the other image. So we'll leave it at that. Um, we've got everything here, our lens corrections. Yes. So now we'll hit synchronize and let it come across. And what we have now is three images which have all the different elements that we want. You see this one here was shot, it was one of my earlier images where I shot it at one second at a very high ISO, so it's brought in a lot of noise and looks terrible, but the area that we want, which is just this little swan here, looks all right. So, happy with that, happy with that. This one here, we see it's got, there's quite a lot of overexposure there. I'll see if I can bring back any of the highlights there. Uh, if I just quickly drag the highlights down a little bit more, perhaps drag this tone curve down a bit. Basically, don't need to try too hard, but because we can paint it in and, and monitor the exposure there. All right, happy with that. That's our base layers. Now, from here, we simply go to Editing and follow down Open as Layers in Photoshop. So this is where the compositing comes in. What we do is we start at the bottom layer, make sure that the bottom layer is the layer that we want to use, that we want as our base image. And we have here the one with the correct exposure, nice stars at the bottom. Move up, we have our secondary image, where we have our bike lights, and the last image where we have our little swan over here that we want to use. So, start with the first image, hold down Option, Alt on a, on a, on a Windows, click add layer mask. And what that does is, if I don't hold down option, click layer mask, it adds in a white layer mask. Basically it goes white reveals, black conceals. So we want to conceal everything in that image and then just paint in the parts that we want to see. So using a black mask is what we want. You can see here that, that 
the white layer mask does nothing, whereas if I held option, bring in a black one, it masks the entire image, which is what we want. Lastly, we'll do the same thing with this top image, option, and add in our black mask. So we have here perfect, perfect image, which is our base layer. I'll keep going down here, click on our, on our layer mask here, make sure we go into our paintbrush tool, we have a decent sized brush, I'll, I'll increase the size of that just to ensure it looks even. Opacity, you want to leave that sort of low, but say around 50%. Now what I'll do is I'll click this, make sure we go over here and we have our white selected, uppermost white, which is going to reveal along the black background. Now if I come into this image here with the bike, and I paint in across here, you'll see that our bicycle lights will magically start to come into the image. Come down along the edge of the grass here just for realism, a little bit more. We can make it almost solid. So you can see if you have the opacity down low, what I can do here is just continue to paint over the image here. Now, we'll go to the next image up, take this, and we know that the swan is Jeez. Hello kitty. <laughs> Kitty's come to play. So now we move up to the third image. And what I do here is, I know where the swan is, so I just start to paint in the swan. And we see it comes in here quite nicely. Keep going, you can just click multiple times if you want to, to bring it in. But basically there we have the swan nicely painted into the image. Now what I can do is come in down to this last image here, click on the coloured layer, the, the mask, and I can just paint over the top here to remove this blurry swan in the background. And what we have there is our final composite image. You see it's very easy with these layer masks to quickly create quite a compelling image. You know, you would hardly believe that that's three photos. So what I do is hit Command S, Control S on Windows, just to save the image. And once we've finished saving that, we can close this. I don't need Untitled. Come back up to Lightroom, and it will bring in automatically. This is the beauty of starting in Lightroom and then transitioning into Photoshop and coming back to Lightroom is that it will bring the image back into our Lightroom catalog, it will rate it like our other images and we have it as part of our collection. And so just to finish off the image I'll export it, I'll go export, what I have here is I'll just put it into my Google Drive folder for a quick send, rename, however you want. I generally have a text expander snippet which is a great piece of software if you're not already using it. I'll just call it long exposure London and then go down, I leave it as a JPEG, color space, sRGB, always for web publishing. I, what I do here is limit the file size to 400k, that's just an arbitrary number I plucked out of the air, but it seems to be a great uh, sacrifice, well not sacrifice, a less, as least sacrifice as possible in image quality and still retain a decent looking image. Uh, resize to fit the long edge or 1920 which is if you have a horizontal image it's sort of full HD and also about the right size for web. Sharpen for screen, include the metadata and hit export. So that's it. Um, if you like this tutorial then please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more of this then um, hit subscribe to my channel and what I'll do is I'll keep putting out images like this. Perhaps to show more of the behind the scenes of what goes into taking an image, what you think about in the field and how that translates into the editing process later on. I mean you can see that this didn't take too long at all, it took me a lot longer to explain it but in reality it's it's actually quite simple to, to do composite images like this which means that you can have more creative freedom uh, in your images. So again if you liked the video like it, uh, subscribe it do whatever you want, uh, but again, thanks for watching, I'm glad and I hope I can just help one person with these videos, um, it's really fun to help sort of share uh, 
the things that I've learned with you guys. Take care and have a great day. Bye for now.